Today I'd like to talk about swept using two guides and one section. Now the swept tool is an extremely powerful tool and it has literally hundreds of options. So we're going to keep the lecture a little short and focus specifically on using one section, two guides. We'll talk about scaling curves and we'll also talk about a spine curve. So we'll go into swept. Now the first question it asks is what section? I'm going to use this as my initial section. It is important to note that when I specify my section I get an anchor point. This anchor point is basically where the section starts and ends. This is a closed section so it comes in and closes upon itself. And this arrow also determines the direction that the section is building. If I were to have multiple sections this comes critical as that arrow should point in the same direction as well as if it's a closed section the anchor points should all be relatively similar or they should fall on the same uh, basic position along each individual section. But in this case we're talking about one section so it's not as critical. Once I have my initial section specified I want to go to guide curves. Now with sections I can pick as many sections as I want, dozens. With guides I have a maximum of three. So for this I'm going to use this is my initial guide. Let me change this to constant so you can actually see what's going on. Here you'll notice that it just sweeps this section along that guide. I'm going to use my middle mouse button and I'm going to add a new set. The next set is going to be this as a guide curve. What I want you to notice is that as the section sweeps up, it uses what's called a scaling method that is uniform. As the guide curves pull further apart or get closer together again, there's a relative distance. That relative distance determines the scale of the actual section as it sweeps along both of those guides. Here I can change this and say lateral and what this means is that it doesn't matter how far apart or close together they get, the height is always going to be maintained. So the only thing that changes is the actual width. I have a third option in here and this you have to be very cautious with. It's called another curve. I'm going to specify this curve. Now if you're not careful, depending on this curve shape, you may end up with some odd shaped um, sections at the very beginning and very odd shaped sections at the end. This is good to use as a reference uh, and as you can see as it scales along this curve it scales this actual shape. This is really great if you have a specific um, relationship if you need something to get larger as it scales along a couple guides. People in HVAC or doing things with flow computations may find this handy. Another option that we have is to use what's called a spine string. In this case as you can see here's my first guide, here's my second guide. As this section sweeps along those two guides what it wants to do is it naturally wants to end off at the end of each one of those guides. And what happens is, as you can see, that section becomes canted in this direction as it sweeps to meet both guides completely. Now you can control how the section flows along this guide or these guides. If I look at the ISO lines on this, what you'll end up seeing is, is you'll see the ISO lines begin to fan out as they get from, from this point to this point to this point to this point. This is a little longer so they'll begin to fan out those ISO curves. We can control those ISO curves by using a spine. What this will do is it'll maintain the section perpendicular to this spine curve. So now the ISO curves are always going to flow perpendicular to that spine and you end up with this result. And the way this works is that section now has to intersect guide 1, it has to intersect guide 2, that intersection has to be perpendicular to that spine string. And that's why in this case you'll see here in order to maintain perpendicularity at this end it has to touch here, remain perpendicular here, and remain perpendicular here at the same time. So this is why it falls short at this opposite end. So as you can see just simply using one section, multiple guides, 
you have a lot of options as far as how this scales along that curve. Some of the other options that you have here are with alignment. You can say arc length, and what this will do is it'll basically put in a, a, a tolerance to simplify this uh, perimeter. If that section has a very complex shape, it may simplify it. It may uh, change the shape slightly based off of what tolerance that you use. If I look in settings, here you can see my tolerance is 0, 1, and point, uh, 0.5. And the looser I make this tolerance, if I have some sort of a rebuild, the, the less accurate that shape is going to be, especially if I use arc length. It's, gonna, um, it's not going to necessarily preserve the shape at 100%. If I go back in here, go back into parameter, I can specify preserve shape, and what it'll do is it'll make sure that the shape is pre preserved using no tolerance, keeping it as close as possible. Another option that we have is section location. Where does the section find? You'll notice that I have anywhere on guide set up, and, and I have another option here for end of guides. So if I use anywhere along guides, I can put the section in the middle, I can put it somewhere here, it doesn't matter along, along those guides. If I specify end of guides, it has to be, in this case, it is at the end of guides. So it'll work just fine. And that is the basics of using swept with one section, two guides. In this case, I have a scaling curve. And I also have a spine. Now you'll notice that if I were to modify the scaling curve, if I double click on this, you'll see that the whole thing goes away with the rollback and I pull this up, select OK. Now it's scaling again slightly differently.